<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Halloween themed episode of the weekly Monsu Hangout. Today, we have a spooky selection of different cases, showing off some of the deepest, darkest aspects of the modding hobby. With us today, we've got Bill over gonna kill you, Owens. Hello, everybody. And I will not do stupid accents. It's me, and I can barely breathe. Uh, today, we're gonna have a lot of fun. As you can tell, we're gonna do the top 10 evil and dark and horish and scary mods and of course we want to hear your feedback in the chat or in the comments let us know of scary mods you know maybe you've created something yourself let us know educate us because uh, i'm sure there's a lot more than what we've chosen today but we've got a special guest with us today it's joe risen how you doing joe hey bill nice to be here how did you get a name like Joe Ryzen? That's R Y Z E N. Well, it's actually Rice. Um, I just <laughs> changed it for uh, the for feel, foreseeable future. <laughs> Cosplaying as a chip, that's right on, right oh, on. Yeah. yeah, it definitely works. We've also got the mosquito. He's in like some mysterious dark place at the moment. I'm at least here temporarily. We'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> All right. To get this party started, we are going to start with uh, a really popular case mod. And this could be the number one, but I think it's uh, one that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with already. It's Mod City's Walking Dead case mod. Do you guys remember seeing this case mod when it came out? Yeah, definitely I do. Oh, are yeah. you are you guys Walking Dead fans? I've been for a long time, both of the comic and the uh, the show. Well, pretty much everything zombie related, really. Mm -hmm. Now, are you on Team Negan or Team Rick? That depends on how pissed off I am on any given day. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys watch the uh, season episode, the season premiere last Sunday? I got to admit, I'm actually quite a ways behind on the TV show, so not yet, not yet. Now, this is my favorite part, is these photos that he does, this environment that he found, like some type of, looks like it could have been an abandoned church, but the lighting and everything is just perfect. I really think that's what brought that mod together in the end. Oh, yeah, definitely, especially the, the toning that he did on the photos to get that nice brownish sepia across the board. That was fantastic. Now, speaking of shows, here's another really popular show at the moment. Do you guys watch Stranger Things? I have a feeling I'm going to be an absolutely horrible bystander on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yet seen it, but I have st the way that they did that the stretchy front on this mod really i i know i'm going to be watching the show in part because of this mod yeah i'm just about finished the second season now and binge watched the first season yesterday <laughs> oh you did what'd you think of it joe share your thoughts it's fantastic honestly i mean the show itself kind of hits every 80s bit of nostalgia that you can think of whether whether it's homages to stand by me ghostbusters uh, you know not just the not just the scary stuff all the all the misfit teenager stuff um but yeah the, the way they the way you put together that mod yeah i can echo with that with the with the hand and and the vinyl on the front that's just awesome yeah the way the uh the hole is growing just like uh in the back of his uh, woodshed, right? There's that strange hole. Is that from the first season where there's that strange hole that he discovered in the woodshed in his backyard? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> By I the have way, not seen, 
any of it. I've only oh. heard a lot of it because my wife likes to watch TV very loudly. Sure. <laughs> By the way, all of these mods that we're sharing, the links are in the description of this video, so you can actually go and see the same stuff that we're sharing if you want to look at it at any, at any time. So right there, that's going to be... Uh, let's say that's number 10 of our top 10 picks. And of course, this list is entirely subjective. There's lots of other mods out there, but it just made sense to put it together a top 10 for today. Now, the next one is uh, our good friends, Bob Stewart and Ron Rosenberg, or Rod Rosenberg. Uh, who are also known as BS Mods, and you may have seen them on Linus Tech when they did the um, annual build-off. I think they've been on two seasons of that. Uh, but this is an excellent Fallout theme uh, for Vault Tech. It's very dark. Uh, it's got all the nice weathering and rust effects on it. This is one of my favorite mods by these guys. Um, and also how they mounted the, it looks like a LCD, like a television set in the side. Wouldn't you think, Moss? Kind of. I don't know if it's an actual LCD or not, but it looks like one of those test screens that you would see in an old old TV show. Yeah, yeah definitely that 50s, 60s uh, retro vibe going on with that. Yeah. Either that or the crashed one in there. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure we used one of those for that. Yeah, and, and the way that the vault door comes out. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big, big Fallout fan myself, and that's one of the one of the better Fallout themed mods I've ever seen. Yes, I agree with you. And I love what they did with the internal stuff as well and how they shrouded it all with old rusty grate. And um, they put, you know, having done some weathered theme builds, they put a lot of work and thought into this one. I really like how it all came out. Even the Corsair all-in-one, although um, you could tell Corsair was probably a sponsor because their logo is nice and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I love a, how that opening up of the power supply like that, so yeah. you can actually see straight through to the inner workings with that classic dome fan shell. Yeah, yeah like it's a fusion reactor or whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah, great job. Uh, and this was part of the GeForce case mod contest. And th this case altogether highlights something that I like to tell people too, where it's don't, uh, it, it, you can't ignore the little details because it's all of the tiny details in this one that pull everything together. Completely agreed. Um, like I said, they, they put a lot of work in this and you can actually uh, see welds here. It looks like um, uh, simulated weld beads uh, to hold the diamond plate inside that bezel because that bezel is plastic. So that's pretty cool how they created that. Yeah, job well done. I'm curious to know where this is right now. I wonder if it maybe resides at uh, Corsair's headquarters because a lot of these uh, projects that they've sponsored, they usually end up at their headquarters. Uh, I've never been there to see this stuff on display, but some of my stuff in the past is there and other modders as well. So that would have been uh, number nine. Now moving on to number eight. Do we have some type of sound effect to represent each entry here? Well, I don't Ooh. know how well I can do Doom, but I... <laughs> 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 that's that's good enough, Drew. <laughs> now this is, and in fact, this is one of Drew's all-time favorite mods. Yes, uh, the Mars City mod. This is one of the first ones that riveted me to this chair from beginning to end. Um, the the little touches of the motorized uh, the, the door, um, all of the different lighting effects that he did. There's a lot of miniaturized work you would expect to kind of see this on the uh, the sound stage of a movie in the background, you know, as something the camera would zoom by where they would overlay the hero walking into the door or whatever. There's so many wonderful details that went into this. Yeah. Yeah, scale modeling at its finest. And the modder was Paul Capello, who also co-authored the Extreme PC Mods book uh, with Maximum PC 
which is a great book if you want to uh, learn more about case modding, PC customizing, and you're looking for an all-in-one book that covers all the basics, uh, that would be the book to get is the Extreme PC Mods. Um, what Paul was doing a lot was kit bashing. That's when you take old model kits and you find uh, different parts and uh, implement them into uh, new, new structures and things. Kit bashing. Have you guys ever tried that? Yeah, I mean, I've, I, I'm a big Warhammer fan. I started playing late '80s, and and you know, I was I was heavily into customization of the models back then, both the models and making scenery. I, I was actually I was actually making stuff for my local Games Workshop store. Wow, that's cool. And this this build just ticks so many boxes for me, like. All the customization, all the little pieces that have been pulled from and repurposed from everywhere else. I mean, this definitely looks like something you could throw on the table of a Warhammer game and use it as the prop. Oh yeah, and and another thing I especially love about this mod, I've got a. No, I'm not quite. Out of it. I really, I feel we kind of focused too much on the case and what's inside the case in modding and accessories tend to get just glossed over or don't get a look in at all and the fact that like the keyboard the mouse everything else was modded for this you know that that's a big thing for me yeah there's nothing stranger <laughs> stranger things than um when you see like this completely decked out case and then it's got like a standard keyboard and mouse and monitor. I've always felt it's gonna it's gotta be a complete package, you know? And one of the other great just a small touch that he did was he took the um smoke generator out of a one of the toy locomotives, just that little coil that they burn the mineral oil off of to get the steam stack effect and added that in as one of the little practical effects on this. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't normally see a case mod that you want to have smoke coming out of. <laughs> and uh, this garage door opened up to reveal the five and a quarter optical drives. And then also the uh, airlock door was uh, uh, actuator operated as well. So those opened as well. Um, and opened for a case fan, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the uh, movie model maker techniques here and very close to friends of the family back in Vancouver growing up worked on it was in one of, one of the major studios and all the little tricks that work so well on on the screen you know? and here's the smokestack that Drew was talking about he used a, a model train uh, uh, element to uh, actually have this stack smoking Pretty damn cool. Um, yeah, yeah, that's definitely a, an all-time classic, and it's great to see that Paul's paid for his photo hosting, and you can still discover his his work online. And also, he has a community forum. Uh, best case scenario, you'll find it in a Google search in their community forums, and he's kept all his stuff archived so people could discover it for I hope years and years to come and be inspired by his work. Uh, so that moves us on to. Number eight, and this is one that's been around for quite a while. Jay Warner had uh, suggested we add this to our list. This is the Renovatio. Renovatio. Oh, it, all those classic fittings. Yeah, and this, what you see, what, what year, 2010 is when it was published on here. So, um, and it was by Johans. Uh, AKA Yogi Bear. It's a Leon Lee V2000. And he obviously he painted this because Leon Lee cases were either white, no, wait, no, silver or black anodized only. I'm almost surprised that this one is on MDPC. Do you think, why is that, Moss? Explain. I just, I feel like the, the sort of horror theme to it just doesn't really fit in with most of what MDPC usually showed yeah you know i mean they're, like they're, you have the, for the really clean builds aren't they yeah yeah i think um 
it was a surprise when it got published on here, but at the time, I, mean, I, I, I think, well, the blood splatters, yeah, kind of like, but it, it works though. I mean, and, and, he, and, he, and he did it in an, uh, an eloquent way, like the blood bag is the reservoir inside of it. Yeah. Now, the first thing I thought when I saw this, just that quick, you know, at a quick glance, the, the scatter of the tubing and the wires and everything mm -hmm. was the, uh, the little controlled tentacles from John Carpenter's The Thing, mm -hmm. that the alien, whenever yeah. going through the metamorphosis. And then, of course, I got that closer look and realized, oh, it's the blood bag and the splatter and everything. But it really is kind of a multi-layered mod depending on what angle you're looking at it from, what your experiences are, and all of that blending together. Yeah. I, I like the photos. Like the, the first one, um, how he has a little spotlight in the background. That's a great photo. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. Love the, I love the little touch of his thumbprint on the signature. Yeah. Yeah. Great idea. Moving on to number seven. This is an individual uh, that's a modern well-known in Brazil, and he has, on a regular basis, each year at their big campus party, uh, this, it's like this huge LAN event, um, he's had an entry for their case mod contest. He's done many different things over the years, and um, he's a great modeler, and this is his Brainiac, and his name is, I believe... Uh, Michael, would that be Michael, M-A-C-I-E-L in Brazilian? Pareto? Or Marcel? Probably Marcel. Here he is right here. Um, the best part of this mod, though, and I believe, um, according to uh, what I found online, this was the last mod he did. He's done. Um, if you look inside the head on top of this machine, there is somebody that is controlling it it which reminds me of was it men in black that had something like that yeah, yeah, yep. was, yeah. and what's great about uh Marcel's work is that it's all done by hand and on this site where i've linked you can find the um the uh all the progress photos and how he did all the casting of, of everything that little alien guy and this head um very very talented all hand fabrication looks like he's using styrene here to make the body yeah i i absolutely love this build um it also highlights a thing that that i've noticed of non-us modders vs us modders because a lot of the us modders They've got a background like you, Bill, in you know, machine shops, metalwork, cars. Then a lot of the modeling scene that I see seems to be non-US, whether whether it's South America or whether it's Thailand, Brazil, and Malaysia. You're right. It's more hands-on, more basic modeling. Um, he's casting the head. Um, we're here. We're leaning. Well, it's a yeah. It's a it's subjective. Um, some people are you know utilizing machines, like especially you know three D printers now help a lot. And I'm sure if Marcel had uh, somebody sponsor him a three D printer, he would you know continue doing amazing stuff and save a lot of time. Um, but yeah, you could tell that um, he's definitely was a, a crafter and a modeler. So that brings us to number six. This is our good friend Ron Lee Christensen here in the States, um, another very talented modeler. And this was uh, inspired by Giger's Lil stat, uh, uh, sculpture that he did, H.R. Uh, Giger. And uh, Ron had just finished this in September of 2017. And Ron is one of the most talented sculptors that I personally know. It did a great job of capturing the biomech theme that Giger always worked with. Yeah, man. Yeah, I didn't realize this was actually finished. I, I remember seeing it a few months ago on some of the forums. 
and it's it's I, I it's just wow. Yeah, uh, it's killer. Yeah, Ron's really got an eye. Um, he was um, he was making stuff in his Blue Horse Studios well before he was even doing case mods. He was or he was already a, um, an established artist, and uh, you can check out many of his other projects too at bluehorse-studios.com. Um, and Ron is just an all-around great guy too. And if you have questions for him, he'll help you. Let's see here. So here's the finished build right here, Lil. And as far as I know, um, Lil. L I L was inspired by Giger's wife or girlfriend that I don't remember, but yeah, the face. So yeah, yeah, I've got like a um, I've got a little cast sculpture of this too. Yeah, it's just killer. So moving on to number five, Mastermind. Again. Yeah, it's an Asus motherboard. That's horrific. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's ITX. Oh. Yeah, I have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I buy it from you, Moss? Well, that was an MS. No, that was one. a gig. No, it was a okay. gigabit one. Uh, yeah, yeah. This another Doom game inspired mod, and somebody also um, casting and sculpting mold. So much source material to work with there. I'm going to move down. Now, this is obviously 3D, 3D printed. printed. And you can tell it's like an early 3D printer. Look at those ridges there. <laughs> well, that's the thing, with too, with 3D printing is a lot of people look at it as a way of doing their absolute final finish work. And it really was only ever intended for rapid prototyping. And yep. so there's always going to be a lot of cleanup work to get a finished piece off a 3D printer. Although they've gotten a lot better now, though. They're not yeah. as bad. Yeah. I mean, that might have been sliced thicker anyway. Yeah, that's true. And there's a lot of ways to finish it afterwards so that you can actually get like a injected molded finish on it. Oh, that, that There's enough material in you know how people finish their 3d printed work that we could probably cover that for an entire episode <laughs> just all on its own he's got a, he had access or he owns a very large 3d printer because uh the scale of this looks pretty big um and i could see why he would 3d print this and it looks like he did it in uh three different stages yep. and join the pieces together and then he did the arms and again, the details in this really highlights what Eel said in one of the uh, recent Monzu podcasts about the fact that it, it just because you have access to the higher level equipment doesn't mean you're not modding because that is a lot of artistry and design work that went into creating the print itself. Oh, yeah, there's a... There's a incredibly large amount of 3d modeling and engineering that that goes into before you know before it gets to the printing stage well that look at all those slices of the aluminum that went into that brain yeah man huh. moss isn't there an in-win case that's a design like that the h tower ah <laughs> uh, <laughs> <slow. laughs> I don't know. I don't oh. think it's the H tower. They, there's, they have a couple of them where they're like the weird, just a bunch of sheets of aluminum, basically. Am I seeing that? Did he, did he replace the the fins on the air cooler with the brain? That's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. that's yep. fantastic. Oh. Right there, mastermind. Now that's in the first Doom game, isn't it? it uh, made appearances in all of them. Yep. Yeah. And this was um, this was in Cooler Masters annual case mod contest. Yeah, let we can see what year it was. I like where the uh, power supply cable goes. That's cool. Um, this was just uh, in 2016, October 2016. All right, we're gonna move on to number five. Guess what? Another Doom game theme mod. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep reservoir, man. That that's a lot of great material. Now this, this one, one I definitely is, remember. Are, are you a Doom fan, then, Bill? 
the first one. I never played the other ones. I, I love the first one, and I was playing it, and this was like, what, Windows 95 era? Yeah. 95, yep, definitely. Yeah. I loved it. Um, the, the, sound... uh, the most recent one really yeah, the... captured a lot of the same feel. Yeah, it really did. The, the two in between, not so good. Uh, not, 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 so, not, you know, not, not the right feel, I think. Well, the return, when I remember when the return came out in like what, early 2000s, when they brought the game back, and I was just like, mm, I don't know. But hey, you know, um, it's, well, look at QuakeCon, is, uh, uh, was inspired by those guys that did the first Doom game. Yeah. I mean, my screen name's still from the original Quake. It was it was a ironic change during multiplayer. I was just like, oh, I'm, I think I was called Jackal or something, and I was just getting killed left, right, and center. So I was like, okay, walking corpse, there, try it, <laughs> and it stuck. Now Ken Burns is in Australia, goes by Zeninator or uh, Zen Mods. Um, again, looks like he's got a uh, you know very artistic background of the sculpting going on here well it's a classic uh clay mold method anyway they're taking the styrene base and just thin layers and this was actually uh, he shared this on our modzu forms too which was a nice treat kind of looks more like a gorilla skull doesn't it it, it, it's shifting back and forth depending on you know what layers have been emphasized, but yeah, it looks like the jawline definitely is much more simian. Hmm. Definitely fits in with the Mazu monkeys. Oh, and he used a Cooler Master Master Case. Okay, let's see. Now he's working on the hand. Now, there's a technique that a lot of people don't really focus too much on. Sometimes when you're doing a, uh, a volume sculpt like that is using tin foil or aluminum foil to build your base outwards. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Airbrushing it. And again, just that insane level of detail on this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna paying attention to how the layers went down, so it, it just it, it just glows. You know, the light playing through, you know that you're looking at bloody flesh and it's not just you know, red paint slapped on something. You could tell that Ken was probably inspired by Paul Capello that did the Mars City Doom build because we see a little bit of, you know, similarities here. Now, this is the part that Paul did not do, though, where Ken really shines. He took the interior and made it as if it was the interior of the, of the building, the industrial building. He's got the walkway rails, the hazard stripe tape, um, pipes for the liquid line. Yeah, so he uh, brought it to another level on his for the interior. Yeah, turning the components themselves into part of the construction. That, that's always a good touch. Yeah, like there's a perfect example right there. And there was a body that was dragged through the doorway. <laughs> Brilliant. So cool. With the blood splatter, yeah. You know what I've always wanted to do was... Uh, for this type of format where you you know make the interior of the PC look like it's an interior of a building, is the Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters building, the old brick building. Oh, yeah, the farmhouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the firehouse. Awesome. Yeah, the firehouse. Yeah, if I was going to do a Ghostbusters-themed build, that's what I would do. Yeah, especially yeah, well, since the, the original building's already that demo dimensions. Like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a very uh, narrow and tall. Yeah, look at this. This is just great. Yep. <laughs> no video cards, though. 
<laughs> Wait, no, there's a video card. It's the platform. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, there's <laughs> one of them. But it looks like he made the uh, those little mini plates removable out of the shroud, so that you could still get in and add more cards later if you needed to. Oh, look at this are, guy. Those are, those are the default armor. armor. Yeah, that's the default. It's just been painted. Oh, it is. Okay. Yep. It was the Mosquito. the Griffin okay. series and the uh, what was it? The Savage as well, I think. Saber Tooth. Yep. If you happen to cross a, a one of the Griffin ones, let me know if you need armor. I think I have three sets for them. <laughs> so I do it? believe that was one of the first cases that we did a uh, whatever it was like featured mod on. Yep, and you were in charge of that. That was your thing to publish that. And then life happened. Yeah, life happened to all of us. As yeah. so often does. When you don't get paid for any of your work, you're just like, forget this. And the, when the work that does pay ends up being a lot more than just 40 hours a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is just an awesome, awesome build. Yeah, I mean, that's the type of build you want at a trade show to attract everyone's attention, the media attention in that. Although it doesn't really look like a Cooler Master Master Case anymore. No. But you know what, though? That's what I've been saying for years about doing a real case mod is, yeah, at some point you're going to get the companies that you have to highlight. This is our shape. This is our logo and everything. But really, a case mod should be about transforming the entire thing. So that was, was it number five, guys? Am I losing track of my numbers in that number five? Um, again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see. Now, this is a mod that I discovered recently. This one is pretty crazy. This was another one that was entered in the uh, Clear Master Case Mod World Series last year. Um, this is Trihexa 666 Apocalypse Dragon. <laughs> And I've got a lot of respect for Cooler Master and that just how much they do for the modding community. Yeah. Like, and this is this is awesome. Yeah, and, and it's interesting how um, modding has shifted to uh, video format more. You know, you got to really know how to um, put together a good video presentation today. If you want to be, um, you know, a well-respected modder builder, you know, get some street cred in the community. So you've got to be able to uh, make videos of your builds too. Yeah, um, it's got, he's got like motorcycle chain incorporated in the spine, the back spine, the. Hmm. And managing to make it all. You know, obviously you can see that it is mechanical in basis, but all of the curves have a natural organic feel to it. it it's not, I mean, it, you can tell that it's a machine, yes, but it is a machine that came from something out of nature, you know? Mm -hmm. I could totally see uh, Insolent Gnome or Dave doing this, something like this as well. He's already kind of dabbled in that realm of sculpting. This reminds me of one of the big PlayStation games at the minute, Horizon Zone Zero. Like lots of robot dinosaurs. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's definitely got that feel going to it. The other thing that this has got going for it is it, it almost looks like it crawled off of an 80s heavy metal album cover. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. Yeah, there is modders uh, that wait for the Cooler Master annual contest to happen, that they've already planning for it. I see a lot of uh, returning modders each year, and um, there's some very talented people in the Philippines and Malaysia that, that are uh, entering this contest. There is, um, let's see, 
got some notes here. Um, there's this contest going on currently with AMD, right, Joe? Some cool contest yeah, that's here. That's correct. I've partnered up with Corsair and the Evil Within Bethesda with part of the big Bethesda partnership. And again, this is you know all the accessories have been modded. It's a complete package rather than just the case. You know, it really brings the look together. Do you by chance know who did the mod for them? Uh, I don't. It's got a bit of that uh, Renovento feel to it, right, Moss? <laughs> it, I played the uh, the first game, and this definitely captures the feel, the aesthetic of the game, because there's a lot of that. There are a lot of sequences where it's got a very washed out in color kind of feel except for the blood which is a very jarring you know it's a very impactful visual image and so this gives you that same feel of the game without giving away any of the you know spoilery details that might have come along so that's a very nice touch i was trying to see if i could find some more info uh yeah, better I know. Pictures. I know that um, Controller Chaos is the person who did all the accessories. Well, my advice to them would have been to have some more pictures, better, bigger pictures. Um, that's just me. Um, <laughs> you know, for opportunities like this. Uh, and then going back here, we had, um, there was another individual uh, that, oh, okay, we have another suggestion here. The it's not necessarily uh, dark and evil and scary, but it's the the Yoda case mod by John Hans, uh, known as Pennywise online, just because the uh, the execution ex execution of everything was done so well. And I'm sure at by this point that a lot of people have seen this mod over the last uh, couple of years. I think he did it two years ago. Such a nice tied together theme, mm -hmm. and the colors really work. Let's see, like the yeah, interior. I love the the back plates on the GPUs. This reminds me of that um, uh, the Batman Joker theme with the NZXT that was really popular on our forums. How uh, they use the neon colors in it. Oh, we didn't have MZ1 in here. The airbrushing on the case is. Superb. That's a good honorable mention, Moss. Is I think it's just there's just only videos of it though. There's no photos. I thought we might have had final pictures or something, but yeah. MZ one. Kind of a scary uh, monkey apocalypse apocalypse theme. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> a, yeah, you can take a close look at the sculpting that he did here. And the fact that the lightsaber glows is a nice added bonus. Yeah, that was... Uh... Again, these links are all posted in the video description, so you can go check them out. That's where I'm pulling them from at the moment. Now, this is interesting discovery as well. Hopefully, this is a YouTube video. This isn't a PC case mod, yet he used PC hardware in it, and um, he calls it Icons of Doom Assemblage, assemblage Sculpture. Now, if you want to really uh, see some excellent level of detail, Joe, have you seen this before anywhere on the web, or is you, did you just discover it with me recently, too? Yeah, I don't think I've seen this until... I don't think I've seen this before. Nice. It's an, it's a, I guess it's maybe the other way, repurposing computer hardware to make sculpture rather than repurposing sculpture into a mod. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you could tell he used um, a couple PCB boards in the background. Well, that was one of the primary aesthetics to Doom was that, you know, incorporating the, the cyber technological into the demonic. That makes four different Doom builds today. <laughs> it shows, maybe, maybe shows the age of the modders. I mean, 
<laughs> True. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. I like it. And it's got kind of that Giger Lil vibe, you know, with the head in the middle of the sculpture. Now, MZ1, and guys, by all means, if there's ones you're thinking of, mention them. We'll do a search here before the hangout ends. We've got about 15 minutes left. MZ1 monkey mod. Mod zoo. That was, I think the MZ1 was only three part series. I think so. Go back. Mm. Oh, there's actually your uh, screen in there from the land party. Land. Awesome. That's not, oh, here we don't. It was a four part series. MZ1. This is kind of just kind of a dark uh, post apocalyptic theme that we did as a staff build. See if I can get towards the final. No, you got part five down. Hit the oh, next one. Yeah. Boy, I forgot how long that build was. Oh, here we go. Oh, good. This is right in Brian's studio. Wow. I just talked to Brian today, actually. Brian D. Garrity, whose studio this was in the warehouse. He's got a new book he just wrote. He doesn't want to reveal what it's about yet to me. He wants to show me in person. <laughs> and this is where that I am right either, now. <laughs> that could either be a there's good Brian. thing or a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, there's Brian right there. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see more UV fans in, in the other UV colors. I mean, green tends to get used a lot. Yeah. Blue tends to get used a lot. Then, you know, the other ones that work, like orange, red, they don't seem to be produced a lot by the OEMs. No. Mm -mm. Do you guys have another suggestion I should search, search up real quick before we end? Mm. Yeah, I've got a couple. I found this awesome French guy who does custom consoles. Yeah, are you going to post his link in our chat? Is it? The, yeah. Yeah. The Hangouts chat. Yep. Ah, councils. Okay. Yeah. I've never had a chance to really delve into doing council mods. I've wanted to. Yeah. I mean, especially with. There's only like maybe half a degree of separation from PC nowadays. Looks like you're going to have to restart your share bill. Oh, well, let's see here. Hold on. Oh, and he completely dropped out. <laughs> All right, well, while we're waiting for Bill to come back, every now and again with uh, Chrome, uh, he has some issues with his share popping in and out. And so, oh, here it comes back up. Here I'm back. There we go. Just trying to fill a little space for you, sir. Let's see here. Did I crap? Hold on just a moment. I was enjoying it on my own there for a while. <laughs> okay, oh, so this go. is um, horrific PlayStation right here. Wow. Little touches like the eye coming out. It's like... Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Could you imagine playing with that controller? Yeah, it's like it's skin that's been stitched together over the console shell. Wow. <laughs> that would be so much fun to do, though. Infected specimen. If PlayStation is breached, contact local health authorities. Did he do some other ones too, Joe, or is this the only one? Yeah, he's done loads. There's, there's a few more in the group chat. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back there. I can't go back there and grab this without mucking around too much. Is there another one I could search up real quick? 
Uh, oh, if you just actually, if you just go to his homepage, Let's see, and the okay. they're all at the top. Uh, once you, yeah, just scroll down past the South Park. <laughs> South Park. <laughs> oh, cool! The Evil Within. Oh, I like this. Yeah, this is cool. I like this already more than that case mod. <laughs> it's got good detailing. It. Yeah, he's he's got some airbrush skills there. Did he only do the controller for that? Just for that one, it looks like okay. yeah. Yeah, I remember when the Xbox 360 came out. There was a lot of people modding that, and there was some contests with that. Yeah, great stuff. So again, if you've thought of any while watching this episode of the Hangout, just post them in the comments. Post the link in there, and we'll check them uh, out, and we'll save them for a future one. We got a Lufty JC says, do a quick search for endoflinedesigns.com. Oh, cool. Devin L. Smith. Okay. He said that he's done some uh, custom Xbox 360 controllers. Oh, I've got that. The Metal Gear one's beautiful. Metal Gear one? Metal Gear Solid? Holy cow. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. Huh. It's great to see people doing this. Excellent. Let's take another look. Mm, let's see. Just chainsaw someone. It's cool that he just focuses on doing controllers. Bah! See, we got to look at spam come up here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lufty says just go to the uh, portfolio and there's a bunch of thumbnails. Very nice work. That's another of the attention to detail where he's using the leather to hold down an actual looks like a piece of linen to get that. Yeah, and I've seen work. some of the OEMs. I had Scuff just did a just did one for Forza that's got real leather on the back. Now the these these it's really nice to see how much this year, especially this year, the OEMs are taking modding themes and adding them to their mainstream stuff. Yeah, Moss, tell the story uh, that you revealed on the Skype yesterday in regards to that with iBuyPower. Oh, uh, yeah. So I went to Best Buy to see if they had a phone that I was looking at, and they didn't. So I just kind of wandered around because I already drove out there, and I looked across the, the aisle from where I was. I'm like, hey, that kind of looks like an iBuyPower uh, snowblind over there but it was off. So I was kind of over there just checking it out, looking at it. And this guy comes over and he's like, hey, do you have any questions? Can I help you with anything? Well, I'm like, oh no, I'm just taking a look at this and whatever. You know, he's like, oh yeah, this one's really cool. Have you ever seen anything like that before? I'm like, uh, yes. <laughs> 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 I was like, I actually did that uh, about four years ago. <laughs> I was just trying to see, take a look at how they did it and it's, I mean, looking at the inside of it is an almost exact carbon copy of my layout, like with the same exact three sets of LED strips and everything right around the monitor, skipping the one on the where the dry bays and stuff were. It's like, hmm. Hey, look, happy. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Moss was the first person to uh, execute one nice and clean uh, and documented on the web. And it inspired 
a lot of modders and I buy power to offer one. Here's another shot. Um, yeah, man, it's cool. It's cool to see that you uh, inspired that. Um, yeah, I, I actually get a lot of a lot of comments on face or uh, YouTube still, and I get a bunch of random messages through my Facebook page too about it. See, there's a snowblind one. Yep. How much do they want for it? Was it just a complete system you had to buy? Yeah, it was just the complete system. I don't remember what the specs on it were, but it was like a 1692, I think, is what it had on it, mm -hmm. at least at Best Buy. See, the great thing about um, yours is that it's documented on the web, so if anybody wants to figure out how to do it on their own, they can discover your work log now and see how you did it. That's, that's again... Um, hosting your your you know your work online properly so it never disappears is one of the best things you can do as a, as just a modder that's online sharing your projects you know um just the other day when I was looking up stuff for uh, today's episode so many great mods were victim of either the photo bucket thing or people just never renewed their hosting and it's like you go through all that effort to share this creation online and then you don't renew the hosting. What? Because it costs you, what? 30 bucks a year, $50 maybe per year. Right guys? No, yeah. and then we end up too with cases of, say they have paid ahead a little bit, but then something unfortunate happens and you know, they're gone. And so there's nobody to re-up the next round of payment. Oh yeah, and there's, there's one I saw the other day and I've put the search term for it in the chat, if you can get to that, Bill. Mashable uh, PC hologram hat soon. That's the one. I can see a lot of mods with that kind of thing going on over the next oh, year. Oh, yeah, I've seen this all over the place. Yep, I just fantastic. started seeing it, too. Yeah, I'll play the video here. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, this is uh, this is another again another um, great way to attract attention if you're doing a build for a trade show or an event display. And well, the great thing too with this, the the character Hatsune is actually a 100% computer generated Japanese music icon. Um, they did this, I don't know, three or four years ago. They actually take her out on tour and do concerts <laughs> in front of people with her on being projected on stage yeah the the, the show toured the us not that long ago yeah that's amazing and the really amazing part is they've got the uh the voice recognition and the animation technology to the point where she actively interacts with the audience in real time and there's no stuttering or anything there, there's a good shot right there. So are they executing same kind of mod that Moss did with the screen? That's, it's a combination of that plus the um, in-win infinity mirror and a two, I guess there's, there must be a two video source to do the hologram. Um, I've just got, I've got, I've got so many ideas to use that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure we're going to see more of this stuff because it just made so much um, exposure and coverage with uh, the media that uh, other people are going to do it. And I buy power has shown that they can retail the idea too. So, well, there you have it. Um, basically, ten and some extra stuff, and but really, uh, it's there's just so many great mods out there. Uh, and if you've got any suggestions for us, just post them in the comments, gang. Okay. And uh, thank you, Joe and Moss, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, uh, once again, you've burned up another week's worth of modding mayhem with us. And uh, I want to show off a little bit of non-computer modding that I did with my kids the other day. We uh, chopped up some pumpkins and... There they are waiting to be lit up tonight. And 
you know, once again, highlighting that it's not always computers that, you know, we want you to go out and mod. We want you to find anything. And come on over to themodzoo.com, hit up our forums, share what you're doing. You know, if you're modding your car, if you're modding your consoles. Uh, we had somebody in the live chat today make the suggestion that there could possibly be a console-specific sub-forum. If there's enough, you know, people who want to have that, then sure, we'll throw that up. And... We just want to share the love, you know, get your uh, either go out and find other mods that people have done and bring them here or you come in and show off your work. But the important thing is share the modding. You guys have yourself a good week and it uh, looks like we're going to be back next week with a really great guest. So you guys go chop something up and we'll see you later. Have a good one.